Okay, okay, hear me out. I'm just here to deliver a message and please don't shoot the messenger. I am here to tell you that right now there's a broken strategy with Draven Legend that can almost guarantee you to hit your 3 star, 4 cost or even 5 cost unit if you play correctly. And right now we are kind of in a degen meta where everyone is forcing Draven no matter the situations. And because of that, I think there are some opportunities for you first to learn how to play Draven correctly and come on top. And second, use this kind of degen meta to find some niches and still secure easily top two, top three, or even top four games without doing too much. And I'm going to explain in this video how to play Draven and how to play against Draven. So the first thing we need to understand is why Draven became suddenly strong. So first of all, Draven got buffed on all his augment, if I remember correctly. So Spoils of War, Balance budget, budget, and Rolling for Days. And these augments, since all of them got buffed, allows players who play Draven to gain an absurd amount of gold during the whole game. And I think they can easily double, if not triple, the amount of gold they can earn compared to like a normal augment where you play normally. So what happens when you play this augment is that if you play correctly, and let's say you're not unlucky, you can have this kind of games where you make a lot of 3-star focus like I did here, and like this guy did here, uh, but he didn't have Draven, so actually he was quite lucky. But anyway, um, this is a kind of board you can make, and you should make actually with playing Draven. But this cannot be done every single game, because there are some weaknesses, there are some moments when Draven is not good. So let's let's talk first about the game plan you want to have with Draven. So unfortunately, I didn't manage to record the game I just showed. I mean, I did, but the file was corrupted, so I cannot show you the perfect example, and it's a shame. Instead, I'm going to use this plus a pen to show you the game plan you want to apply when you have Draven. So the game plan for Draven is kind of easy to follow, but there are a few mistakes you want to avoid if you want to have a very good game with it. So first of all, during this stage, the stage one, you have to assess the power of your team. You have to understand whether your team is good enough to start a snowball during stage two. You have to assess the number of units you have at two stars, if the items fit your units properly, and if the synergies are worth being uh, considered good. Based on that, at two one, you will have to make a choice. If your board is strong enough, you should pick Spoils of War. If it's not, you should not pick Spoils of War. You have to consider something. Spoils of War is an economy augment. It doesn't make your board stronger. So if other people pick, I don't know, um, Geese from the Fallen, uh, Tons of Stats, this kind of augment, then you have a significant disadvantage compared to them and you have less chance to fi win fights, kill units and stack some gold from Spoils of War. And this is a mistake that you should not make. I tried um, because I like to limit test a few things. I tried and it's a complete disaster if you have a weak early game with Spoils of War. So one thing you can do, I don't advise you to do this because I feel like it's like gambling, but some people like to do it. It's like if during stage one, you think you can find upgrades by rolling once or twice, because the thing is at level two and at level three, you have very low chance to get anything else than one cost unit. So it's very easy to make two star units from that. You can do it thinking that at two one, you'll take spoils of war and start a win streak. Um, but again, if you roll again nothing, you literally lose the game um, at stage one. So that's why I don't really advise to do so. But you can do it. It's fun um, in some ways. So then after for leveling, since you want to play very aggressively, you want to make sure that you invest your money into having more units into the, on the board. So at stage two one, you want to be level four. Definitely, you don't play Spoils of War with being level uh, 3 here, it doesn't make sense. Then at stage 2-3, you usually want to push level 5, uh, because other people of Spoils of War will do the same, so you want to keep your win streak, you want to kill as many units as possible, so you will push level 5, you have to put the rhythm. It's really fun because just recently I released a video about uh, low tempo and high tempo, and this is like extremely high tempo, so actually uh, you can watch the video after, um, I'll give you the link. And then after, you can do this if you feel like you have a win streak and someone else also is, has a win streak and is very strong, you can push level 6 here. 
it can make you much stronger and manage to keep your win string. But don't do that every time. Uh, you have to scout uh, because so often it's a waste of money to do this here while you could do level 6 at 3-1. And you can stack more interest, uh, gold interest in these two rounds. Then at stage 3-2, you will have, a, um, how is it called, a balanced budget from Draven and other augments. So balanced budget is not an instant take. Like Spoils of War, you should not take it no matter what. Um, balanced budget is very easy to understand. If at stage 3-2, you have an insane board already, uh, you have an insane win streak, you have a lot of two star units, your items are so good, then in that case, you can take a uh, balanced budget, it will give you even more gold, and you can literally skip the level 7, skip the level 6, and push level 8 very fast. Since you already have a strong board, even if you lose fights, you will kill a lot of units, so you still have, uh, you're still going to have a good amount of gold from Spoils of what. If, however, you have you're in the middle of the lobby or even low low end of the lobby because you didn't manage to have a good board at stage 3 2 you will need to pick a combat augment this is your only way to kind of come back and be stronger and kill as many units as possible to have a lot of gold uh, because anyway if you don't kill units if you keep losing your spoils of war from 2 to 1 is useless and that's a mistake you you should not make Whenever you pick Spoils of War, you have to be strong, you have to kill units. So that's it. Take up Combat Augment if you don't feel confident that your board can survive the stage without a Combat Augment. Then after, depending on the situation, but usually you want to push level 7 here uh, after the Carousel because you manage to get a lot of gold, you manage to get a good board, and then you want to still push aggressively to have a better quality with your shops. So there's 1% chance, for instance, you find a 5 cost. That, uh, that's 1% chance here, 1% chance here, 1% chance here. That, that's, that's actually possible, that happens. Or at least you have more chance to find focus units and you can play around them. And then after here at 4-2, this is really important. You want to be level 8 and pick rolling for days. Uh, that gives you the free rolls. And then you want to roll aggressively, at least all, not all, but at least enough times so you can find your focus to star units that you need to be strong this this stage. So again, once you're strong, once you, for instance, you play Azir Shurima with Nazus, right? So at this stage, you want to roll for Azir two, Nazus two, and all the units you need to fit the comb with the synergies. You can maybe have one Cassante, uh, anything, but that's it. Do not roll more than that because what you want to do after is to win rounds or at least kill many units, stack some gold, get back to fifty gold. Uh, so this stage. What you have to do only in this stage uh, is to scout, scout for to see if other people are making three stars. If yes, then deny them. I don't know, someone is playing Challenger, Ionia, Yasuo. Um, just deny the Yasuo and Kaisa so they can't make a three stars. Uh, you have to scout if Nazus or Azir are contested. If yes, then your game plan is to push level nine and play a lot of uh, th uh, five cost units. Maybe you can even make a three star five cost unit. <laughs> we never know. Uh, if you're not contested, yeah, then your game plan is to try to make Nazus 3 and Azir 3. And that way you will manage probably to secure first place or second place. But you can only do that if you don't use all your gold during stage 4, because you need to accumulate a lot of gold thanks to Spoils of War. And then after you have enough gold with this augment plus, plus the gold interest. And then after you can easily uh, find 3 star units. Alright, before I tell you how you can play around Draven and can I counter Draven, let me talk about the weekly meta analysis uh, that's completely free. So you just need to sign up. I put the link in the description. You put your email and you will receive every week a meta snapshot of the best comps that you have to play or you should focus on if you want to have fun and be competitive on TFT. So it's completely free. I'm doing the scouting for you. So you don't need to figure out what to play and look at stream and all of that. I'm doing this for you. And then after you can just focus on your game and win with your games. Okay, now let's talk about the weakness of Draven. So obviously there is one weakness and I think we can abuse it to somehow sneakily a lot of good games. Maybe we will never finish first, but we can easily finish second, third or fourth and almost guarantee that we don't have a bottom game. So the biggest weakness of Draven is the fact that it only gives gold. It doesn't make your board stronger. Spoils of War, Balance Budget, Rolling for Days, they don't 
impact your board, meaning that if they pick this spoiler of war and you pick actually an augment that makes your board much stronger, you will have a significant advantage during the early game and during the mid game over Draven. You can apply a huge pressure. Since everyone's applying a pressure, you're just going to apply a bigger pressure. And people who will not hit, people who will not play strong board accordingly, are doomed to fail and make bottoms. And since you have like seven, six, seven, eight Draven per lobby, it means that three, four of them will not have a good early game like I showed you, will not apply the strategy like I showed you, and they will lose just because they make this mistake and they should have played something else. So this is where you're going to win your games or at least finish second. You're going to pick an augment that makes your board extremely strong at stage two, at stage three, and at stage four. Yes, you will probably downscale, but if you manage to have a very strong early and mid game, save your HP, save tons of gold, and then after during late game, you manage to use this advantage to find your comp before the others, you manage to have much more HP than the others, and you can also deny some full cost units, you have a high chance to finish second most of the time, if not first. So let's talk about the legends that actually fitting to kind of counter Draven. Earth is a very, very good one. You now have a couple of decent game, decent comps, um, which can be extremely powerful if you have a good emblem. I'm thinking about Noxus. Noxus loves the Noxus emblem, Juggernaut emblem, Slayer emblem, Rogue emblem. So you have four good emblems to play Noxus. You can also play Void, even though the National got nerfed. Um, having like six Voids during early mid game will make you snowball hard during this moment. And after you downscale, of course, but you already secured your top four uh, just by having this and by playing normally. So I, I think that's worth it. And obviously you have also the Ionia emblem that naturally helps you to go towards um, Kesa Ionia, which is an excellent late game comp and one of the best right now. So yeah, th this, this actually gives you a good amount of options to be strong early, mid and late game. Then you have Israel. Israel is extremely powerful. It allows you to have tons of items from stage two, so you can use them and snowball the fights with that. Remember, like when you have the double amount of items compared to your opponent, you are you can be twice stronger than them, honestly, if they have just poise of war. So actually, Israel is an excellent carry, uh, excellent legend, sorry, who can carry you the early game. And also like the other the other augments are really not that bad. It gives you more items, gives you some gold, uh, gives you champion duplicator. That's nice if you're playing, uh, let's say, Noxus Reworld with Katarina and Darius. And after, if you have tons of items, you can have a kind of scaling in the late game because all your units will be stronger if they have items. Caitlyn, on the other hand, I feel like it's a good augment because it gives you most likely put a very strong board in the early game. So you have like a uh, tier three unit, you have uh, two star units, and here you can even have a tier four champion. Uh, but the issue is like, if you pick this, sometimes you get a Shen and you'll be like, yeah, cool. Uh, it's tanky, but I'm not sure I can win rounds with it. And after you don't have, you, I mean, this is kind of similar to Draven, but instead of having gold, you have XP. So you can push level seven, level seven and eight rapidly. And then after you can have the same as Draven here. So actually, I feel like Caitlyn could be the same as Draven, but in a lower, more tempo version, meaning that here you have a stronger early game. You don't farm gold, but you can easily uh, push level eight and have things with this. And then after you can have free rolls. So actually, I feel like Caitlyn could be slightly better than Draven when everyone is playing Draven. You just play strong board with Caitlyn. And you have the same results with the three star focus units at the end. So I don't know. I'm I I'm not I don't like this kind of playstyle. But if some of you want to try and tell me in the comments uh, how it goes, I'd be really curious to know. And last thing, you can play Poro because Poro can give you more chance to get access to very very powerful augments. There is one, for instance, which is literally obliterating anything. That's Ravenous Hunter. It gives you a Varvik. It, it transforms your Varvik into a carry. And you play Varvik carry, the Varvik reward. I did that yesterday. Uh, I never had such an easy game in my life. 
So you have a couple of niche omas you can get, or at least have more chance to get with Poro. And that's why I, I do believe Poro is actually a very good legend right now. So like I said earlier, I actually made a video this week where I explained the difference between low tempo and high tempo. And I believe this video is extremely relevant right now because it teaches you how to play high tempo. And especially now when everyone is playing very high tempo. And I think that this is a great example to follow if you want to uh, deepen your knowledge about TFT and adapt yourself in this meta. And make sure to join my free newsletter where I do the scouting of the meta for you so you can just focus on your games immediately. See you at the top of the ladder.